Obsidian versus Notion versus Rome note taking. Uh, which is better comparison? Hi there, you guys. You want to start using a note taking application. And you probably want to choose between Obsidian, Notion, and Rome, but you can't um, uh, choose between those three. Well, you hit on the right video. So, you guys, note taking, it's really personal for some people. And there are some people are meticulous in their notebook organization and with careful folders, subheads, and bullets. You know, others, myself among them, take more, scroll it anywhere you can approach. So however you like to take notes, whether they're text only or elaborate scrapbooks, there are note apps out there that can handle all your weird quirks and note-taking needs. So we have here Obsidian, Notion, and Rome. So you guys, Obsidian, uh yeah i obsidian is a real a fairly new um on uh yeah a, a new category of note-taking apps that push through the boundaries of what a note-taking app uh can and should do so along with notion and rome research which um i mean yeah rome research right here uh, it strives to be an uh um, an all encompassing digital database database for your life and and kind of pulls it off. Well, their Obsidian and Rome research are pretty much basically the same, but uh, you know, automatically here Rome minus ten points is that it, it uh, um it lacks offline support. So that means totally choose Obsidian over Rome right here because you know. It doesn't have like an offline support, but not having an offline support also have its own pros. And we're going to talk about that later on under Rome. But yeah, Obsidian has a much steeper learning. Uh, yes, much steeper learning curve than the other apps on this uh, on. Uh, yeah, than the this two other apps. So only check it out if you're prepared to put in the work to get it set up to your needs. So there are a lot of uh, things to set up. Um, and at its score, it's just a notes app that uses text files formatted in Markdown, but things can get more complicated quickly. You can sort your notes into folders and subfolders using the sidebar, but more interestingly, you can link between them using internal hyperlinks, you know, typing, uh, uh typing this for, for a while, typing. Let me just give a moment. Give me a moment, you guys. Oh no. All right, I'm gonna okay. Typing, for example, uh where is that character? Uh it's the the parenthesis, but it's not. I'm looking for it. Alright. Typing this character right over here uh brings two of those, brings up a dialog box that lead that lets you select any other note to link to. And this means you can easily reference notes you've previously created. For example, you can create a list of all the books you've read in the last year and link the notes where you review them. And on top of that, you can basically customize anything you want. You have total control over the interface and can have as many as as many notes as you want to, to open in at the same window. So there are even community plugins which add features like a Kanban board that take it far beyond simple text files. And I have a colleague and uh, he told me Obsidian has literally changed my life and I don't think recommendations come much stronger than that. So yeah. <laughs> Next is Notion right here, you guys. So how Notion works is, you know, um, yeah. Notion is the only app among this three that uh, skirts the provision of it being a note-taking app. It is, but because of its collaborative features, um, it can be so much more, yeah. It's basically three tools in one, a powerful notes app, which is why it's uh, on uh, this video, and uh, a task and project manager, and a reference wiki. So how you combine those three things is up to you. Each new document or node is called a page, and everything in Notion is referred to as a block. Now, block include basic elements like text, checklists, and headings, as well as media. Yeah, as well as media types like images. 
um, web bookmarks, um, video, audio, code snippets, and files. You, you can use as many blocks as you want in whatever combination on every page. They're super quick to insert. Uh, you, you know, just, just type and scroll through the list. And there are lots of templates built in too, so you don't feel you have to customize absolutely everything when you're just starting out. Just click on templates on the sidebar once you've logged in and uh, look through the options to find one you like. So the sidebar is also how you browse all your pages and it's split into two sections. We have the workspace and the private. Let's continue with Google right over here and let's try to explore the sidebar. All right, so I'm gonna click that. And now I think we're in. Anyway, uh, at the two sections, Oh uh, yeah, for myself, I'm gonna go back to that part. All right. Okay, let's just I'll add in this one because it's done. Okay. All right. So while it's loading, let's talk about the workspace and private. You know, split uh two sections that basically we're gonna work with on the sidebar. Uh, we have the workspace in this and the private basically workspace, which is right here. Uh, so this is the sidebar. Uh, it's split in two sections, workspace and private, right? So where uh, workspace is, which, which is all the pages you share with the rest of your team and private where you can have your own notes over here. And uh, while collaboration is a big part of Notion, you guys, it's not forced on you. So everyone has their own section where they can work on things and then move them out to the public areas for feedback and revision. Uh, it's a great way for an entire team to work together without getting in each other's way. So one thing to note is Notion builds itself as an Evernote competitor for personal users. It can be, but it's too much for most people. Yeah, if you happen to know about Evernote as well, it's a note-taking platform. And its offline functionality isn't the best. So if you love the idea of Notion, go right ahead and try to free, try to free personal plan. But to, uh, but, to, but to me, it's really best as a team notes apps. But, you know, if you're working alone, Obsidian is totally better. Now, Rome, wow. It doesn't support offline feature. And immediately... Uh, that gives it like minus 10 to me. Um, yeah, right here. Rome is a note-taking uh, yeah, application for network to thought. So specific, uh, specifically designed to help you connect your thoughts um, and group them together in related bits of information without having to copy and paste links and little like you would with your own brain. So you guys, um, it's like <coughs> a network thought. So... Uh, what it means is that, you know, uh, you don't really have it. It's coupled with AI. That's why it, it it won't work offline. So that's why you really need to be online for you to access the features. Like, for example, the sidebar, daily notes, and the graph overview over here. So the graph overview, the feature, this feature can be used as a connector to get a bird's eye view of all your pages and how they are interlinked. You can zoom in and out according to your needs. So I found out that the graph in overview is really cool. So you guys, um, let's create our Rome account by uh, signing up and put the email and then confirm password if you want to check that feature out. But for me, I think the obvious winner here is Obsidian, you guys. So yes, I would love to try this too because my friend told me that it changed his life um, and I don't think any other promotional statement can top that. You know, Rome is uh, last on my list just because it doesn't uh, have an offline support. And of course, um, Notion, uh, I, I like it for when I'm working with a team, but personally alone, I don't think paying for the plans uh, is worth it. So yeah, that's it for this video, you guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I will see you again in the next video. Peace out.